Hi guys, welcome to this video. This is Shane Smolian and I'm going to be doing a study session tips video. This is just the first one that I'm going to do to give you some background information on how to maximize your study time as a student. So the first one is time. So I want to emphasize this. This may seem obvious, but it's not to a lot of people. There's no substitute for time. Try to avoid creating very few study sessions and trying to maximize, maximize, maximize every study session to be the peak, 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 because you're not putting in the time. If you don't put in the time consistently, there's no substitute for it. I don't care how ideal you make the study session and the gimmicks and the tricks and the cliff notes and all of these different things. If you don't put in the consistent time, you're not going to get anywhere. So you can measure very clearly the, the amount of hours that you put in with your grade. I mean, it's very, very clear relationship. The amount of study hours you put in, your grade's going to go up. Don't think that you're going to get by with just skimming on the hours. Now, avoid trying to make a perfect study session. Don't worry about it being perfect. You just need to put in the time. So focus on the time. Be consistent with your time. So a little bit each day builds long-term memory. What that means is that you can roll out of bed and take a test and not have to worry about if you can remember things. If you cram the night before your short-term memory, you can lose it very quickly. And when you become more stressed out, like the day before a test, the day of a test, or finals, or midterms, your memory is shot. I mean, you might be learning one thing one day, forgetting it the next day, or learning it, and then forgetting it when you go into the test. So you're going to have good days and bad days. You can't control it. Don't try to control it. Some days are bad, some days are good, some tests are good, some days tests are bad. But if you consistently go in each day, it's going to even out over time. Okay, so if you wait and you cram, you might catch a bad day and you, and you may forget what you just did. So that's important. Next thing, quality. I, you need to be studying in a quality range, like a quality zone of, of studying. It does not need to be quote unquote perfect. So a lot of times what I'll see with students is they'll try to make everything set up just, just perfect, just perfect, and it never gets perfect. And so what they end up doing is they just study for a few hours in perfect conditions. Let's say they study for two hours in perfect conditions, but they should be studying for five or ten hours in quality conditions. So you need to have a minimum standard. So in other words, it doesn't need to be perfect, but you need to have a minimum standard. So what I mean by that is that if you have a range into here, let's call this the quality range. This is quality. This is down here, this is garbage, and this is what we would call the perfect study session. It doesn't need to be perfect, guys, but it needs to be in a quality range. In other words, we don't want the trash and the distractions, but it doesn't need to be perfect. You might get to be perfect if you have some good study sessions, you will, but you just want to be in that quality range. So you want to avoid distractions, okay? Phone, music, whatever, and you want to increase your focus, which we're going to talk about in a minute, how to do that. Clearing your mind. This is really important. So before you sit down to study, to get in that quality zone, you want to, first thing you want to do is clean your area. Wherever you are studying, make sure it's cleared off. Don't have junk papers everywhere. Don't have pencils and dirt and whatever. Clean the area. Wipe it down. Clean your chair. Get everything clear in your mind because that's gonna you're gonna follow where your area is. If your area is junk, your your mind is gonna be junk too. So eliminate the distractions, no phones, no interruptions. Interruptions are the most critical thing to avoid. And there's some companies when they have employees working, they purposely make them go through these periods of blackout periods where they can't have any emails or any phones. Because every time you get an interruption, every time you get a distraction, every time you look down, every time blah, 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 the chats and the, the text messages and the call, call, all of that stuff is creating a, a trash environment for you to learn. So I would say find a quiet spot. It could be in your house, but a lot of times it's good to have a special location. I like to sometimes pick up and go to a library with a student. That can create a very powerful stimulus. Even if it seems like you're wasting time to drive there, just go physically go somewhere. 
quiet. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. Coffee shops, I think it's trash. There's too much chatter in the background. There's too much distractions, too much ADD, looking up, looking down, people ordering music, clack, clacking of making the drinks, and blah, 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 blah. You know, that's creating, you know, you're not maximizing your time, okay? I know people like to do it. I know people like to, hey, look, everyone's studying, everyone's focused. No, it's trash. Stay away from that, okay? It's not good. If you really want to get a good study session in, it's not good. Now, I would say one exception is classical music. This classical music has a beat and a rhythm of about 60 hertz, which is an optimal learning frequency. Okay? So you get into these certain types of learning, theta brain waves, theta alpha, which is these, these slower frequencies. That can be good, but avoid anything that has words. So no words in your music. No words, because what's going to happen is your brain is a processor and you're trying to focus and let's say you read a book and you hear distraction music in the background and you hear words, you're taking your processor of your brain and half of it's trying to focus on the words and you can't focus on what you're doing. And the same thing like if you're in a coffee shop, all that chatter and all that stuff, it's, it's not good. Go to your computer right now and try to open 30 windows up in, in Google Chrome. Your computer's going to start running super slow. That's what you're doing to your brain if you have words going on and you, you, you're getting distracted, okay? So I would say the only exception is classical music or there's some very, very trance-like music that's a very slow rhythm that can be good for learning. So th these are important things. They may seem obvious, but believe me, they're not. Because people will they make this big deal to go study, the big deal to go down to the shop, a big deal. I order my coffee, I sit down, I got my latte, I clear out the desk, I look around. You know, all that time that you just did, you wasted time to study, and now it's just distraction mania. Eliminating distractions is the first thing. Now, the next thing I want to talk to you about is increasing your focus. How can you increase your focus? Well, I like to use concentrated time blocks. Use a timer. The simpler, the better. You see right over here, get one of these little kitchen timers over here, okay? You can go get them for five bucks at Bed Bath & Beyond. Carry it around with you in your bag. Turn, and, it, and it may not be, ten. it may not work correctly, like 10 minutes might be nine minutes or, or whatever it is, who cares? Carry that around with you, crank it up, put it down, go. Okay, that's it, that's your little, it helps you focus, it concentrates your focus. Okay, so I, I find that the simpler, the simpler it is, the better. Avoid using your phone timer. I, I Come on, put the phone down. Just put it down. I mean, if you really, really have to have your phone, if it's some type of emergency, fine, you can have it. But of, I like to avoid the phone timer because it's getting me to the phone. It's getting me in that state of mind where, okay, here's the phone, text message, Twitter, whatever, Facebook. I like to avoid it. Okay, so simple kitchen timer, put it up. And then I would say set your time goals for the week. You know, some people have a list of things to do. I've got to do this homework set. I've got to do that for this project. And this, the, 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 the. Okay, fine. That's fine. I think it's better to have time goals for the week. So there's rules of thumb. And this is like an old school thing that my parents used to do. My father used to do. When he was in engineering. But you have, however many hours of class you have, multiply it times some, times some number. So if you're in an engineering class, or a really hard class, or a science class, or economics, or something that's really difficult, or you're in med school, however many hours of class, multiply it by some number, four or five, or it could, it could be anything you want. If it's an easier class, it could be times two. But I know that if I'm meeting for three hours in class, and I multiply that by four, I got to have 12 hours for the week of that class. So 12 hours for the week, so I, I have, already I have three hours in the class, and I have, I have to put in another nine hours of study. If you space that out in your mind and get clear about it, that this is what has to happen, this is the budget of my time, this is what has to happen each week, it helps you because it helps you build a budget in your mind of what has to happen to be successful. And remember what I talked about, that your grade is going to be directly proportional to the amount of hours that you put in. There might be some point to where it like peaks out and you may want to stop at some certain amount of hours, but you're definitely not going to get a good grade if, you're, if your hours are down here. If you, if you think you're just going to go in and have these perfect study sessions, but you're not going to put in the hours, your grade's not going to be good. Okay? If you're learning new stuff, I'm just going to tell you something right now. If you're learning new material the night before the test, you're not going to do well. You're not. You're dead. At least if you want an A. If you're learning new material the night before the test, you're probably looking at a B or a C on the test. That's just how it is. 
Now, some classes you can cram for, and you could pull an A. I'm just telling you, for the most part, if you're getting into serious classes, you should not be seeing new material the day before the test. And that means that you haven't been putting in the time. And write down your time. Write it down. How many hours a week have I studied? Make like a little grid. You know, like I've done, you know, if you have 12 hours a week for this one class, if it's like a killer class, write it down. Write it down and make like a Gantt chart and write it down so you can know or just keep a log of your hours. It's super, super important. This is, this is how you will have success. All right, so the next thing is ideal amount of time per, se per session per day. So I would say per session, when you're having like a little study session, I would say a minimum of 15 to 30 minutes uh, of time. Okay, so whatever it is, you, you can plan it out and you have your breaks in between. This is just like a sample graph I just put up here. This is a timeline of this could be your hours for the week. Now within after a session or within a day, you might have breaks, five or 10 minutes. Now, I know that there's studies that say, oh my God, you shouldn't study more than 30 minutes because you can't learn after that and your brain shuts off. And, and there's all of these, I've seen a lot of these courses out there and they say, okay, after 30 minutes, you got to stop, you got to break. And okay, that's I, I can accept that. You, you might need a break. But per day, I find that this is highly, highly individual. It, it, or for example, if you're in med school, you might be sitting in that library for, for 14 hours in the day, or, or or you might be studying that long in a day. So those little maximum time rules don't really matter, okay? It, 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 it's individual. Some people might get to a point where after two hours, like, I'm done, I'm cooked. Some people, I've seen people go for, study for, for 15 hours straight, okay? So everyone is different. Like I said, some max out at one to two hours, some can go all day. But the main thing is that you look at your weekly load that we talked about before and you're hitting those goals per week, okay? So, and I, I wouldn't say it's best to do it all, okay, in one or two days, but just to note that everybody is different on that. And then the other thing I would say about a study session is try to have a continuous flow with what you're doing, okay? So, for example, like know what you're going to do before you go there. Don't just sit there in the library or wherever you are and you're just wandering around and you don't know what to do. Know exactly what you're going to do before you do it. You know, I used to tutor for years, for 15 years, or more than that. Let's just say 15 years of serious tutoring. And some of these kids would show up to the tutor session, and, they, and, and they're on the clock. You know, they show up and, and we're tutoring. They would sit there for 15 or 20 minutes trying to find their, their paper, trying to find the worksheet. You know, and it's an hour. It was an hour block of tutoring, and they would just sit there just wandering around. I don't know what to do. Know what you're going to do before you go there. Don't wander around when you get to your destination to study. And then the other thing I would say is move on if you get stuck. If you if you hit some problems that you can't do or you feel frustrated, move on. Leave it for later. Move on and keep the flow going. You want to keep moving through. And then finally, I would say that set up your next material at the end of the session. So what I mean by that is before you're about to finish your study session, Look ahead to what you need to do in the next study session and circle it on your paper or write it down so you keep this continuous flow going and it makes it easier to start up on the next study session. So that's really critical because it, you want this to be like a continuous thing. It shouldn't just be like, oh my God, I got to go to the library. Oh my God, I got to do that. You know, it should just be like this continuous motion that you're doing and you get in a rhythm. And when you tend to get in that rhythm, you start to get straight A's. Things start to roll. You get in a routine. Okay. So that's, those are just some, some tips. That's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. And I'll be posting some more videos on study sessions and some different areas of school, depending on the different requests that I get. But I hope that you found this video useful and I'll talk to you guys soon.